All right, so being that we already have our program started and we went through that in the last video, if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that. We're going to go ahead and add our stuff in our IO tree now so you get to see how we've done that or how we're going to do that. So this is the reason why we added our RS Lynx driver so we could see exactly what's in our IO tree. Uh, being that we're in our driver, this batching, batching station driver that we did, we can easily see in our back plane we have slot 0, slot 1, slot 2, slot 3, slot 4, and slot 5. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add our IO, our IO inside of this program, and we're going to do that adding it in our IO tree, but we're going to utilize uh, RS Lynx Classic to do that, so you don't actually have to physically see anything. You can actually do everything and get it get all the data you need for as far as firmware and everything you need directly from RS links. So first we're going to go ahead, we know our ethernet card is right here, our e, um, 1756ENBT. Now we can't right click and go to that one, we have to actually come to the very top one because that is our actual communication. So we're going to actually come in here, so this is the, the kind of the pathway we're, we're communicating through. So what I like to do just to kind of cheat um, and I like to just go ahead and copy this and this is again the quickest and easiest and, and easiest to understand way to do this is copy this and then come over here to your your back plane new select new module right and then you can paste that in here come over here and just click it right now now you can also go in here and click communication and select it if you want to from here but you see how much you have to select through so it's just as easy to come over here and just select that and then you get to pick the version now we're going to create it and this is where we're going to name it we're going to pick our version we're going to put our ip address in we're going to first change the version because we know from our rs links that we are a firmware of 6.006 .006. now we don't have to change it any higher but what i like to do if you're in compatibility mode, you have to be at that ver either that version or lower in your setup. I like to be at at least equal. So uh, at that point, I'll put in version six, still compatible, and you can put exact match if you want to. If you're an industry specific, but in our case, we're just going to do compatible. You can always disable keying, but I don't recommend that because it needs to your program needs to verify that the actual uh, card or specific device that you're putting in the slot is actually going to be what it's supposed to be. Now again, the if you had a different series, it would select right here, but in this case we don't. Right? We have series A. So we're going to click that. It's going to quickly, it's going to change the setup a little bit, just a, a slight bit because we have a newer one. Now we're going to give it a name. So we're going to call this uh, batching uh, and if I would have typed it right, batching, <laughs> did it again, batching, um, sorry about that, batching Ethernet, Ethernet. All right, so now we need to put our IP address in there. Again, we can come back in here and get this from here, 192.168.15. That's the communication path we currently have. Now, 192.168.15. Okay, so this, what slot is this in? This is actually in slot two, but how do we verify that? We come over here in our RS Links Classic, right? And we come over here, slot two is the one we're actually in. So our EBNT card is in slot two, we're gonna pick slot two, and we're gonna click OK. It's gonna add that in there, and now we have our actual Ethernet card installed. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is go ahead and add the rest of our I.O. in here. Now, um, again, when you come down to it, discovery, uh, you have to necessarily, you know, be online and stuff like that. I don't necessarily like to do discovery because it doesn't give the correct. Um, it doesn't give you the correct uh, versions of what you're using, generally speaking. Sometimes it does. I mean, 90 percent of the time you, you have. Uh, perfect setup, but again, when it comes down to it, it's better to know what you're doing than to, to have something automatically do it for you. Um, in this case, we're going to go and put our input card. So we're going to click device properties. We're going to come in and get our card again, which is a 1756 IB16. 
Okay, so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna paste that in here. This is the IB16. All right, so verify that, just IB16. This is a version of 2.006. Okay, so what we're gonna do is 2.006. We're gonna click that, click, click create. We're gonna verify that our version is right. Um, the version that came in is actually version 3.0, so we're gonna change that to, to make sure we're compatible, we have to lower it down because the current version we have in our actual system is not uh, that version or higher, so you need to make sure you're compatible. It is slot three. Again, we verified that through our, ETH, our comms right here. So um, come over here to our program, and we can name this as batching uh, batching inputs. We'll call this digital inputs. These are real world. Okay, so these are real world inputs. So what we're going to do is quickly just go ahead and create that. That added our inputs down here. Now we're going to come down here and add our outputs. So we're going to right click and the specific card we have is uh, 1756 slash OB 16 I. Now that's just a isolated DC output. Uh, it is a version firmware of 3.002. So we're going to add that in here. We're just going to paste that in here, get this version right here. Again, it's a DC uh, 10 to 30 volt DC isolated input or out isolated output. Sorry. We're going to come in and, and the version came in correct, so we're good. We're going to put in the compatibility. We're going to come in and this is slot four. And we're going to call this batching. Uh, and this is going to be digital outputs. So digital outputs. This way it gives you a, a firm understanding of what we're putting in. So we're going to click that and now we have our output card, right? So we have our digital inputs, digital outputs, and we have our ethernet so far. Now we still need to add in our analog card. So we have an analog card in slot five, and this analog card is just uh, like, we currently have it hooked to speed pots, and uh, it's, it's an analog input and an analog output. So the 1756IF8, is an analog in and out. So um, what we're going to do is this is version one. So we're going to put that in there and we're going to go ahead and add that into our program. So we're going to pick that and this clicks right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this is version one. Now you can um, come in here and, and change this. We're going to actually use, uh, we have this wired for a, a zero to 10, but we're going to come in and do that. We're going to name it first. So this is going to be batching, and this is going to be analog, and then we'll get slot five, and then we'll come in here and we'll go ahead and scale these. Um, the input type again is going to be voltage. You can put zero to ten uh, is what we're going to be using. So our top scale will be um, the scaling right here is voltage. In engineering units this is exactly what the, the card is expecting to see uh, so the low limit would be a zero volt the high limit would be a 10 volt signal again we we've set that from the input range right here and we're setting the the engineering units so you can set that you can scale that however you want to but in this case we're going to keep it at a zero to a hundred meaning at zero we're at zero at 10 volts we're at a hundred percent Hopefully that makes sense and that, that ties in. You can put alarms in here, but we're not going to put alarms in right now. We're going to go ahead and scale the rest of these really quick so you can see exactly what to do. So real quick, we'll just pop the, that in there. You can put offsets in here if you need to calibrate it. In our case, we do not need to calibrate this card. So uh, we're going to come in and put this in here and put this 0 to 10. And we're going to put that in there. So we've changed so far. We're currently coming in here, setting this up 0 to 10, everything 0 to 10, and then click OK. Now you can calibrate the card, but again, you have to have a meter to verify that. We're going to click OK. That's added our card in here. We still need to add our PowerFlex drive. 
Okay, so we do have a PowerFlex drive in here. So this PowerFlex drive, we can right click and show right here. This is gonna be slightly different. So what I wanna do here is put in a power, I wanna just grab this. I know exactly what I have. I have a PowerFlex 525, one uh, horsepower, or actually one P, and that's a, it's a 10 volt input. So it's a 110 volt input. So it's a, really a single phase input and a three phase output 230. It is a half a horse drive. So I'm gonna copy this and I can look at my configuration right here for the same, the same exact way for the ethernet as I did my ethernet card, but we're, we're gonna do this slightly different. So the version is going to be 5.0, right? And 5.0 is our version. So we're gonna come in here and we're going to put that in here. Now you see that right there, so you gotta back this up to PowerFlex. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our drives. We're gonna come in here and single this out down here. And we're going to get our drive. And then we're gonna come in and see this. Let's see what we're missing here. <clears throat> and I believe it's PowerFlex, Power Flex. Why am I not seeing this? Oh, I don't have everything set in catalog. So let's see right there. This is going to actually this is going to be in E E E N. So let's come in here and I believe this is set up a slightly a little bit different. So you want to make sure that you have uh, all this list put this in here and come in here and scroll through our setup here. So we do have the module in here. We just need to pick it and it's slightly different. That's why I'm, I'm actually calling this out <clears throat> and I'm not seeing it for some reason. Let's see, clear all these rock wall automation and make sure we make sure we have the actual ability to call this. Oh, uh, the reason is because we're not under the cart. That's what we're doing. So add the module here, and then that's when you're gonna be able to put in your PowerFlex. So even in the, the first case, and this is the reason why I said you have to do it slightly different, even in the case where um, I was adding an IO, um, even I went and back and, and looked at it slightly different. You're gonna pick PowerFlex right here, um, and you see, you have to be communicating through your to your drives through an actual Ethernet card. In our case, we're using that's what SIP is. So the uh, SIP protocol is is actually talking through an actual device. So you're coming out of your rack through the card, and we're going to the PowerFlex drive. And that's the reason it didn't show up before because you can only put in your you can't put in a PowerFlex drive inside of the actual rack, right? You have to put in PowerFlex drive talking through the rack, which is talking through a communication card. So we're gonna come in here and pick our PowerFlex 525. This is gonna be the uh, embedded. So there's a couple of different ones here. You have the 22Com E. We actually have the uh, embedded ethernet in ours. So we're gonna click that. We're gonna make sure our versions are right. Um, and all that's going to do is we're going to quickly just come over here to our version. We're going to make sure our firmware is correct. Um, in this case, we're going to come over here and make sure our firmware is right. We're for uh, 5.1. And then we're going to come in here and name this our PowerFlex uh, Power 525. And then we're going to give it our IP address. And you can look at your IP address again from here. And this is just happens to be 192.168.17. So in this case, we're going to come back in here in definitions. You notice the definitions look a little bit different. So you can kind of go 192.168.17. And again, compatibility mode. We want to make sure our drive rating is good. Here's the, the quick thing that I want you to see right quick. There's a couple things. You can do upload from device. Come over here and click your device and upload from device. This is exactly the perfect way to set things up. If you have conductivity to your device, if you don't have conductivity to your device, just set it up per what you know about the device 
and that way you can sync everything and do everything properly. Now again that comes in and you can add in different things if you wanted to. Um, the connection format, uh, we can right now we have the connection format uh, set up for some step logic and stuff we did for our actual um, you know uh, 5, 525 training so what we want to do is actually make sure that's perfectly fine we're just going to upload what we have we're going to change it when we can the automatic device configuration is something that you can enable what this does is if the device specifically fails what it's going to do is if you plug in another one with the same IP address it's going to prompt you to load in the old parameters that you currently have inside of the actual system so if in the case what we did we, we uploaded the drive parameters just a minute ago we just uploaded the drive parameters now if we click the the automatic device configuration the ACE, ADC if we enable that if we ever in, if there's ever in the future a specific time where the drive goes out and you have a drive replacement if you manually set the drive IP address on the drive and you plug it in the the program will automatically detect oh by the way you have a new device do you want to load back in the old parameters and that's that's the good feature of this we're gonna click OK on this you don't have to use that in this case we're going to go ahead and create so we have everything set we have everything in our IO tree right now if we go to look in our actual controller tags you can see the only thing we have in tags is all the devices that we put in our controller so being that we're at this close to the 16 minute mark uh, we have added all of our IO and everything we've done but what we want to do in the very next video is go online start utilizing and seeing how things are done but what I wanted to show you is exactly the process that we did right here to understand using RS links you can determine what you need to put in here and what we're going to do in the very next video is we're going to come in and put and we're going to we're going to download this to the actual processor then we're going to make sure that all of our IO works properly all of it, it it doesn't have any errors and everything like that and it won't because we actually used the device read from over here on our actual uh, um, RS Links Classic so hopefully that made perfect sense and it made it a lot easier for you to understand a good process to actually understand what you need to put in here and the ties of you know seeing the IOs and stuff like that so we'll come back in the very next video and talk about the device types and the tags and stuff like that as soon as we download so with all that said hopefully you got a lot out of that and again we appreciate you and we'll see you guys on the next one